Many are the women who are faced with the challenge of not being able to take seed. Some people call it barrenness, others call it emptiness, but science calls it infertility. Gone are the days when infertility was treated as a spiritual problem and purely a woman's affair that had no cure. Since 1974, however, science and technology have demonstrated the best ever in procreation through various assisted reproductive technologies, including the in vitro fertilization, IVF. IVF is a process of joining an egg and sperm outside of a woman's womb. And GTV News takes an in-depth look at the IVF process. New life begins when an egg from a woman is fertilized by a man's sperm in the fallopian tube, indicating that conception has taken place. But if a woman is unable to conceive after 12 months of unprotected intercourse, infertility is suspected. According to experts, a number of factors account for this. They include low sperm count, poor quality sperm, an impotence on the part of the man, and damaged or blocked fallopian tubes, fibroids, hormone imbalance or pelvic infection on the part of the woman. The quest to find treatments for infertility led to the invention of some assisted reproductive techniques such as the in vitro fertilization, IVF. IVF enables infertile couples to have children. Since the first test tube baby, Louise Joy Brown's birth on July 25, 1978, in a hospital in England, more than 3 million babies worldwide have been born through the IVF in Ghana at the Women's Hospital in Tema. The first IVF baby was delivered in 2000. Since then, the hospital has delivered more than 650 live births through IVF. Dr. Paulo Usuba, a gynecologist at the hospital, said the IVF process is not one simple procedure, but a series of some five steps over several weeks. In nature, only one egg comes out every month. All right, for the IVF, that one egg is not enough. So what we do is, as the body is stimulating the ovaries, we add the same chemical, we induce ovulation. We give medication, then gradually the eggs will develop. The stimulation takes about 10 to 14 days on the average. They come here every day for injections. And then we monitor the eggs a few days later. We monitor their rate of growth. And when we get three eggs that are about two centimeters, we stop the stimulation. So what we do is we take out the egg like we are doing. Then we add the sperm to fertilize the eggs, and then we achieve fertilization. Then do the transfer. Mr. Prince Ousimensa and Mr. Evans Bufa are embryologists at the Women's Hospital. Here, they wash and concentrate the sperm and eggs. The concentration is then left in the incubator, set at 37 degrees Celsius, for 24 hours so that fertilization can take place. During this time, only one of the mini sperms will penetrate the wall of the egg and achieve fertilization. The cells then divide and multiply and form an embryo. After two or three days, a healthy embryo comprising around eight cells is transferred into the uterus by a means of a thin flexible tube where it is left for implant and form a pregnancy. Once implantation takes place, Pregnancy tests are taken to confirm conception. To the ladies out there who are not able to have kids, these days there is treatment. Infertility is not the end of the world. There is a way that we can help you. Many couples, not only from Ghana, but Togo, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and even from the diaspora, who would have been denied nature's most prestigious gift, the fruit of the womb, seek help from this and other such hospitals. However, some religious bodies still consider IVF unethical, and physicians who carry out IVF are accused of playing God. But whether or not IVF is unethical, he who feels it knows how it is to be without a progeny.